Guys, there are some fascinating one-on-one -on -one matchups in this game on Sunday between Seattle and the Cleveland Browns. We're going to run through four of the matchups that I think are four to particularly watch, and you guys let me know who you think has the edge in these one-on-one -on -one matchups. So I'm going to give it to you. You guys tell me which side you think is the advantage. Let's start with a Browns DB versus Seattle receiver. DK Metcalf versus Denzel Ward. If you're picking between a one-on-one -on -one matchup here, who are you giving the advantage to? That's Does anybody have game. Denzel? I think it's a uh, it's a it's, a mean, it's really a tie. I, I just think the size difference here is so a little banged great. banged up though. He is. I don't know how healthy he's going to be. I yeah. when I was doing this, I went to the fact that he's going to be completely healthy because I, how do you judge otherwise? You don't know. I just think as good as Denzel is, it's, it, this is the kind of guy that creates a big problem for I him. I don't know because man. of the size mismatch. It's just I, I, but it's Jamar huge. Jamar Chase is a big receiver too. <clears throat> And I don't think he's as big as, as Metcalf. Maybe not as big, but he's way more talented mm -hmm. overall. And uh, a freak. If, if Denzel Ward can play well mm -hmm. with Jamar Chase, mm -hmm. he should be able to play well against everybody. Now, he's been inconsistent at times in his career. He's been pretty consistent this year, it seems to me. What would they have to hold him to for Ward to say he won the matchup? Under 50 receiving yards? That's so hard for me yeah. to say because if he holds him to 42, but he scores on a 38 yarder to win the game, right? You know, like it's yeah. it's really hard. To, it's hard to put a number on it. But I'll tell you, that play Denzel made last week was elite. Yeah, very good. It, it, when when he threw the pick, I forget who the intended receiver was, and Zach Jackson. And I was sitting next to each other, and Zach said, "I didn't see Denzel either. Like I can't believe." And then we saw the replay. It's like because he wasn't there. Yeah. Like, he was open when he made the throw, and Denzel closed on him. He wasn't even on him and, and saw well, the— Denzel took a step the wrong way. Yeah. And so, I don't know if he was doing it intentionally to bait the bait quarterback. Move. I thought it was a bait move. It was an Or it was, and what it showed was incredible recovery speed yeah. and makeup speed. A high percentage of interceptions are bad throws by the quarterbacks yes. and the guys in the right place at the right time. Yeah. This was a play where— he hawked it. It wasn't hey, a bad throw. It no, was just a great play. <laughs> it was a great play. I like play. DK Metcalf, but listen, give me Denzel Ward. There, there is like let's let's not get it twisted. The, you know, there's a path to victory here. It's not like we playing. I mean, you got the same. I, I don't. Last time I checked, I don't think that the the roster got worse be, between the time we played the 49ers, Right? Don't turn the ball over. That's there the it path is. To victory. Yeah. If if, well, if you've lost it. Jerome Ford and maybe Jedrick Wills since then. Okay. Um, well, but you so didn't have Betonio in that some, game. Yes, you're correct. I'm looking at it like this, man. If that defense shows up like they did against the 49ers, I'm not worried about the Seahawks offense. They got some nice stuff. I love it. Yeah. But the 49ers are way more talented than Seahawks. I'll give me Denzel Ward. He had a nice yeah. pick last week. I got him I got, I got him shutting him down. I agree with you, G. I'm 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 gonna go by a hair with Denzel Ward. By a hair, Ward. yeah. But I, I, like I think it. I think you're right too. Like if if the Browns play great defense in this game like they did against the the Niners, they got a good chance to win. Yeah. If they play defense like they did against Indy, they're yeah. going down. Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah. All right. Well, it's that? a two-two split there. If I had to pick, I'd actually go. I think Denzel's a better cornerback than DK's a better receiver by a smidge. So, also some uh, injury news: Jed Wills back at practice today. That's yeah. big. Good. Also, Jerome Ford back at practice today doing drills. Yeah, he's not going to play. Yeah, though. but I can't. I imagine don't think he, he plays. Play. But the fact he's already back and he was doing the. Uh, Tire drill, you know, high yeah. steps. Yeah. Not necessarily contact, but yeah. it's a good that's sign. It's pressure on removed, the ankle. Five I mean, days removed from a high ankle sprain. So that hey, it was a low grade high ankle yeah. sprain. He's aware. He's a, he's aware of what's behind him. A lot of people want to see. Yeah, he, could, he could lose Pierre his Strong. job in a hurry if, if Pierre Strong plays well. <laughs> he listen, he listen, I do not want that. Let me get out here and flex his ankle a little bit. It ain't even hurting like that. All right, it's interesting. That? Jed Wills, though, who did not practice yesterday, is back today. That is so he's going to play. That's really good news. Next individual one-on-one -on -one matchup. Let's switch sides of the ball here. How about Amari Cooper versus the fifth overall pick and rookie sensation who Corbin Smith this week said was already the best player on the Seahawks defense, yeah. Devin Witherspoon, the wily vet or the highly touted rookie? Which Witherspoon is, for those who care about such things, the number one graded corner on PFF. Yeah. They got crazy corners. They got Woolen. Woolen is really yeah. good. It's yeah. nice. Yeah. With this move. Not a good recipe with a young quarterback who's turnover prone. But let me start this, man. Listen, don't get it twisted. You might be nice, but you're still 12 and a half years old, Witherspoon. I didn't see Amari Cooper make people fall the last two, three weeks. You can, he's, he's the route god. He is the dude that tap dances on everybody. He's not fast, but if you're going to tell me 
that a rookie is going to shut Amari Cooper down, one of the best route runners. Now, I got a lot of respect about, for Witherspoon, but rookies are rookies. He about to get this work. I'm going to go sl- – I'm, I'm with G again. I'm going slight edge for Cooper, but it's close because Witherspoon's really good. I would take Witherspoon. I would have taken Denzel. You said it was 2-2. Two, two. I'd take oh, Denzel. It wasn't 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it was 3-1. Oh, it was 3-1. Oh, I'd take yeah, He was leaning Denzel too. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, but on this one, I would take Witherspoon over. Yeah, I was re- this was really tough for me. Really tough for me. In the end, what it came down to was – Amari's savvy veteran savvy. route running um, might be a little too. I don't. I mean, then I went back to this. Well, hell, last week Amari wasn't even. Did he play? You know, I mean, it, well, that wasn't his fault. No, I know it wasn't his fault. That's but why I'm, I'm not blaming the wide receivers for no, anything. No, but when you look at who's throwing the football, yeah, who's throwing the flag? That's uh, where Amari showed up. Yeah, you, you are yeah. kidding. But so for me, if. I, I'm going Amari Cooper only because of the veteran to rookie thing, but with this quarterback yeah. and his inability to get him the ball last week, I don't know that we should well, necessarily be expecting him to have a big game. If this you're week. asking who's more likely to have a better game this week, I'd actually say Witherspoon. Yeah, that's the question. Be, oh, is, that, that the, is, the, is that the question? Who has yeah, the edge it's in not, a one-on-one it's matchup? It's not with the edge of the Who wins the matchup? That's not the same but, question. But the to quarterback me, but plays into the, the quarterback. Receiver. Yes, he yeah. absolutely plays into. I mean, the quarterback. We we rewatched G, Mike, and I right before the show. I was going through. Can I set this up? Both? Yeah, go ahead. So this morning, I, I watched the All Twenty Two film twice each week. Right. And you watch it the first time and you see some stuff. You watch it the second time and you pick up some like See a lot more. A lot of nuances. And there was another play we could talk about later with P.J. Walker and, and something that happened to benefit him that he didn't do right. But whatever. And there was the play when, when <gasps> P.J. Walker threw the interception. The arm punt down to the three-yard line. Yeah. If you go back and watch the route Amari Cooper ran, it is one of the most beautiful ballet-esque make a defender fall. He had 50 yards of separation, essentially. And the ball was well, on the drone, but not fifty not yards. 50, but what are you talking about? Fifty. He had yards. thirty yards ahead of him and ten yards on each side to the sideline. Yeah, this should have been an easy touchdown. It, yeah. it was a been, terrible yes. throw by PJ Walker. Easy yeah. touchdown. When you see it from that behind angle, where you could really see the space and you don't see it on TV, it's glaring just, when you look at it. From o- that. He's just always open. Is my point. So Amari's, Amari's going to the back pile on wide open, and and uh, Walker throws it to the middle of the field. So he's got to cut back. I wonder if that no was chance. just a miscommunication where he thought he was going to cut one way and he. I don't think so. I think it was just a terrible he, throw. God, how can you miss by that much? Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, that's was, not a terrible awful. throw. That's just what are you doing? Yeah. That's that. That's, and, and that's where, in this game, if the if the Browns want to win, I thought they did a good job of, of saying this last week. PJ Walker has to hit a couple plays. He has to hit a couple plays, and he finally hit that play down the sideline to Elijah Moore, and it was just enough to get him where they need to go. In this game, P.J. Walker has to hit one or two throws to keep drives going, move the chains, or possibly get a touchdown uh, on the road for them to get a win. So, you know, that's a, the that's a throw that they're going to have an opportunity to have next week yeah. or this week coming and up they, Sunday. But it can't it. be predictable. Like, I'll go, I'll go back. But, you know, I'm not a big play caller complaining guy, as you know. But watching the game last night, I'll defend Baker a little bit because I don't think he played particularly well in this game. Oh, that last drive? No. Well, that last drive was ridiculous. Oh it took forever. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. But even the whole – for <laughs> most of the game, until the game for, – for most of the – First half for the entire first half, basically, they would they tried to get their run going and then they gave up on the run and they were actually running decently early with um, what's his name White uh, is it White? He, yeah. he had one James decent White. run, but he was getting stoned on but a lot of But here's the thing, runs. you know why? Because if you go back and look at their plays in the first half, they would go run, run, pass every oh, time. They were completely the predictable. The other thing too, was weird about that game is their starting field position. It seemed yeah, like yeah. they were starting at the two yard line every, all night. They did. Four, three times they started inside the five and four times inside the ten. Yeah, that's a tough ask. Yeah. All right, what's next? Who's next? Next up, we're going to the interior of the lines here. Joel Batonio, an all-pro guard for the Browns, and Jaron Reed, one of the more underrated defensive tackles in football. He leads the Seahawks with four sacks this season and has had a sack in each of the past two games. But is that enough to edge out Joel Batonio? I would take Batonio, but, you know, it's, a, it's obviously a step in the right direction. If Jed's practicing today – you would have to assume he's probably going to play. But we'll go back to what we said earlier. If he doesn't, that puts a lot of extra strain on Joel. Joel, I, I think, has not quite been to the level that we've expected of him at times this year. I'm, like, trying to keep from hiccuping. But I would still take uh, – <laughs> I, I would take Joel in this uh, – yeah, I would take Joel. Browns ran him from 160 
150 yards back-to-back -back weeks. Um, this is another game where I think they'll still be able to run the ball well. Um, they're going to need to run and stick to it. I'm going to go with Joe Batonio. See, this is, this is, this is the catch-22 with the Browns, right? Because they've had so much quarterback turmoil, mm -hmm. people forget the rest of the roster is nice. <laughs> like, you start going down position for position, you're like, well, okay, well, I'll take him, and I'll take him, and, and I'll take the Browns on this one too. And you start to see the depth and, and just at all these other littered positions, how they got guys that can get it done. In this case, I, I'm going with Joe Batonio. I, I like Jaron Reed or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But, hey, let's go back. You know, this isn't a DJ Reader. This isn't, you know what I'm saying, this isn't some of the guys the 49ers have in, in the middle. This is, you know, I, he's, a, he's a nice ball player. But give me Joe Batonio specifically in the run game. I'm actually going to go with, I agree with Mike. I think he's underrated. I think their whole D-line is underrated. Batonio's not played well this year. His And in particular in the run game, he's not been good. <laughs> If, it, it, you see it week in and week out. You, the grades back it up. His his rush uh, run blocking grades have not been very good, uh, and and Reed's been really good. So I'm going to give a slight edge to Reed. Yeah, I'm with you. Reed scares me. I think this matchup scares me. If you give me Joel Batonio from any other year, then but this yeah. year I got Batonio and I don't even really have to think about it. He just hasn't been that guy. Nope. I don't know if this is the year he gets old. I don't know if he's got some nagging injuries we don't know about. Well, he had that he surgery. Just, yeah, you know, that's so. true. I, it just doesn't look he like the same guy great. to me. Nope. You know? yeah. I don't know. So, just, it was close. Again, I think I wanted to compliment you. I think you yeah, did a really good close. job because they were all very, very close. There was None of these were slam dunks for me. I could have gone one either more, way. Right, Mike? We do have one more. I appreciate that, Jay. Last up, JOK, who's been way better than any of us could have imagined Jim Schwartz's defense this season, taking that next step forward we had hoped and anticipated. And Kenneth Walker, who has quietly been one of the best running backs in football. It's been very good. Which I'm going to go with Kenneth edge? Walker. Um, this is the part of the game that scares me a little bit um, because if there's one thing that you can say um, is that, you know, the Browns got touched a little bit against the Ravens on the ground. Um, in, 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 you know, especially with the quarterback, uh, Lamar Jackson. You take a look at this game, um, they got Kenneth Walker. Last game, I thought uh, Taylor and what's the name? And Taylor and Moss had a nice game, one-two punch, and I think Taylor really got his best game of the season. So this is a place where you come in and you say, okay, Seattle can run the football. Kenneth Walker is physical, <laughs> and I take my chances with the, with the, with the uh, Browns on the ground rather than in the air because that leaves Miles Garrett uh, trying to get off blocks and not pass rushing. I, I think uh, Kenneth Walker definitely has it over JLK, especially because of the weight difference and the fact that he's just so physical to get on the ground. I think it's another good matchup for Mike. I think I agree with Jay. All four of these are really close. JLK's had a tremendous season. I mean, he's I've, by far, right, their most improved player this year. Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's even debatable. Yeah, I mean, I, I put Delpit up. Delpit's too. up there too. But we Delpit thought Delpit least, had a level of play last year right. that we'd I mean, already late in the year. He had started to improve. Okay, some. last year. Okay, I mean, was hell, awful. Yeah. But he's been was great gone for him to be released, especially against the run. But I, I think Kenneth Walker is one of the five best running backs in the league. He is a load in the in that running yeah, game. Th this Pause. matchup really scares uh, me. Going for Kenneth Walker, but again, I think it's close. Yeah, I, I, same thing. Going with Kenneth Walker. Um, not the ideal matchup you want for JOK. Mm -mm. Um, I think he's big enough that he's going to give him problems on making tackles on initial contact. He, I think this is a guy that you need help to bring down. So there'll be some gang tackling. Well, and that's, I, yeah. Go to, ahead. To that point, that's why it's hard for me really to look at this as a one on one. Right. Yeah, I don't look at because it. Because I don't think this is really on JOK to get him down. No, but I, the, when, I was, yeah. when I was weighing it in my mind, I said, okay, so what if there's 10? open field mm. contacts between JOK where he's the guy in front of him and right. Kenneth Walker. I just have Walker winning more of those okay, than JOK. Yeah. They have yeah, to, Dalvin Tomlinson's the guy who's going to be responsible now, for it if, the most. And if those guys get arms on him and slow him down, then I like JOK. Yeah, I, well, I mean, Derrick Henry's the biggest back they faced, and he was mostly being stopped by the Browns front. He yes. was, absolutely. Yeah. So if that continues, yeah. then yeah, he's got a huge advantage because he's not coming at you at full speed. Right. You need you need to change the line of scrimmage and, and be on their side of the line of scrimmage so that he doesn't get a two, three yard run downhill and now he's in the secondary. They can stop him like they did Derrick Henry before he gets going. That's yeah. how you gotta stop big backs. Who are you yeah. going with, Jason? Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker. Okay. Little Kenneth Walker nugget for you guys before we get to my five stats. Is he a Michigan State guy? He was a Michigan I State guy. So. 
yep. 49% of his rushing yards this season, 49% have come on stretch plays beyond the outside tackle. So with an extra blocker, he does not run I wouldn't have up the that. middle with, the near, with nearly as much efficiency as he does outside. What that equates to is he breaks a ton of tackles. 63% of his missed tackles yeah. have come outside. And so when he gets on non-defensive linemen, yeah. very difficult to Oof. bring down. But 227 of his 400, uh, 222 of his 450 rushing yards a season have come on stretch plays outside of the hmm. most eligible tackle. That, that's interesting.